Live from Case at 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. Our 15 year old rushed to the hospital this morning, shot in the head in what appears to be an accidental shooting at the hands of his cousin who's also 15. San Antonio police were called to the Garden Valley manufactured home community in the 8600 block of South Zarzamora at about 1135 this morning. Our Garrett Berger tells us they are still piecing together how exactly it happened and what the consequences could be. Two teens and a handgun, the makings of a tragedy. These are not cases we like to handle, but we do have to handle them and they do have to be investigated. It happened inside of a Southside mobile home. Police say the 15 year old suspect told them he was showing his cousin the gun when it accidentally went off. The details are still hazy as to how. But it sounded like uh, from the little bit of information we do have is that they may have been playing with it. The shooting happened in a home full of kids. There was uh, the two 15 year old males, a 16 year old male and uh, three juvenile girls, one of them 11, one of them seven and one I believe five. A scary day for others in the park too. They're 15. Who, who gives a 15 years old kid a gun? That's what I'm thinking about. Police don't know where the gun came from. Police are still investigating, so we don't know exactly what kind of charges anybody involved might face. So he'll be magistrated at the juvenile detention facility and then brought over to youth, uh, youth services where he'll, he'll be interviewed. There's the other charge, potential charge of, of how the firearm got into the hands of, of the minors. So uh, we'll be looking at that too. Though. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. As of our last check with SAPD, the victim was still in critical condition at University Hospital. They do at 6 San Marcos police looking for some help identifying a suspect that they say ripped off a convenience store there Friday night. Happened a little before 7 at the Spirit Pit Stop in the 1200 block of I-35 South. According to investigators, the suspect wandered around the store waiting for everybody to leave. When they were all gone, police say he approached the counter as if he was going to buy something. Instead, he pulled a gun, demanded money from the register. The clerk handed it over. The guy took off. You can see he was covered up pretty good between the hoodie and the mask, but police say he has what appears to be a tattoo on his right hand and wrist. Not a lot to go on, but they're asking anyone who may be able to help identify this man to give them a call. Call the San Marcos Police Detectives at 512-753-2306. The Kerr County Sheriff's Office and the Texas Rangers investigating a deadly shooting after they say an argument between two men turned into a shootout. It happened yesterday afternoon in the 500 block of Honor Drive in the Horizon subdivision just southwest of Kerrville. According to deputies, the two men were arguing when both men pulled guns and then started shooting. 68 year old Mart Hanna was shot and killed. The other man, a 71, 71 year old retired U.S. Customs officer was not hurt. No charges have been filed as of yet. The sheriff's office says the results of the investigation will be handed over to a grand jury. Given San Antonio's title as Military City USA, it should come as no surprise that the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine is already in the arms of members of the military here. The first shot administered yesterday at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. Paul Venema with how the military is distributing the vaccine. Military leaders here explained that the first batches of the Pfizer vaccine arrived locally on Monday. Brook Army Medical Center and the Air Force 59th Medical Wing were among the first 145 sites to receive shipments of the vaccine. Walter Reed in the National Capital Region and the San Antonio Military Health System uh, received the largest amount of the, uh, the, the DOD and Coast Guard sites. Distribution of the vaccine stored at minus 80 degrees will initially be administered to military emergency room and ICU staff and first responders. We're going to do everything possible to put shots in arms as quickly as possible. The first shot was given yesterday to Major Andrew Gospel, an Air Force doctor. While I was the first one in line, while I was the first one to get it, it wasn't for me. It was for my patients. It was for the patients that I can now see, so I don't have to concern, be concerned about spreading the disease. He described it much like the flu shot. He said aside from a sore arm, he's had no side effects. At this point, it's unclear how many shipments of the vaccine will be arriving in San Antonio. We've been told to expect uh, approximately weekly reshipments. The 59th Medical Wing will serve as distribution hub, according to General DeGoes. Like the rest of America, 
we hope that this is the beginnings to kind of a return to some normalcy. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. Well, today, some local health care workers and support staff were also immunized against the coronavirus. It took place at the UT Health School of Nursing in the medical center between 1 and 5 this afternoon. It and just like she has told us she would, infectious disease expert Dr. Ruth Bergren did not hesitate when it was her turn to get the shot. Um, a lot of adrenaline. I'm very excited. I am proud um, that I get to be one of the first people. I am feeling very privileged and honored. And I hope that everybody sees that I'm smiling. I barely felt the needle. It was no different than getting a flu shot at all. Nothing different than getting a flu shot. So I hope everybody feels confident when it's their turn. And Dr. Bergren is planning on getting her second dose on January 5th. Every day over the next five days, 1,000 medical professionals and support staff will be receiving their first doses of the vaccines at UT Health. Vaccines for the general public are expected to be rolled out in the coming months. And we're expecting to do a live interview with Dr. Bergeron on Thursday during the 6 o'clock news. All right, fact versus fiction. The nation has been waiting months for the COVID-19 vaccine, but now that it's here, questions are flooding in about its safety, liability, and where everyone can eventually get vaccinated. Courtney Friedman checked in with a local hospital epidemiologist to answer all those questions. A brand new vaccine crafted in a brand new way will obviously come with questions and misconceptions. This COVID-19 vaccine does not and cannot cause COVID-19. So that's really important. That comes up with vaccines all the time and it's important to recognize this does not contain live virus. It will not turn into COVID-19 infection. Dr. Jason Bowling is the lead hospital epidemiologist for University Health System, and he also works with UT Health San Antonio. He says it's a fact. Both leading COVID-19 vaccines, Pfizer and Moderna, require two separate doses, both equally important. And this first vaccine that's coming out, you'll get the first dose, and then 21 days or three weeks later, you get the second dose. And it's important you complete both of those to make sure you get the full protection of the vaccine. The approved Pfizer vaccine is already being used all over the country, including right here in San Antonio. The Moderna vaccine is set to be approved this week. Both have shown extremely high efficacy, but you cannot mix and match the vaccines. Very important that if you get the Pfizer vaccine to start off with, you finish with the Pfizer vaccine and same with Moderna. Bowling confirms most of the population will likely have to wait until spring or summer of 2021 to get the vaccine. But by then, he says there will be many approved administration sites. Healthcare facilities have to apply to receive the vaccine, to apply to be a vaccine administration site. And by doing that, they have to demonstrate that they have the facilities to store the vaccine and that they have people that are appropriately trained to provide it. All approved sites will be required to report any and all side effects. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. This is not a story that's going away in case that will be closely tracking all angles of vaccine coverage over the coming months, just as we've done since basically April and March. It'll be the main focus of our trust index team as well, dispelling this and bringing you the facts. If you have any claims you'd like us to look into, you can submit them at ksat.com slash trust index. Meantime, let's give you a check of what it looks like out there on the roadways right now. You're looking at a trans guide shot of I-35 and 410. This is located on the city's northeast side. As you can see, their traffic is moving, but a little bit of a delay out in that area. Meantime, HEB and the San Antonio Food Bank spreading some holiday hope at the AT&T Center today. We're talking about the annual Feast of Sharing event. This year is especially hard for many San Antonio families due to the pandemic. To celebrate the holiday season, nearly 11,000 meals were handed out to families who are struggling to put food on the table. There are blessings to count. They might be fewer than years past, but there's opportunity to celebrate. And I think we want to wish everybody a happy holiday season and we want to make sure that they have the ingredients that brings their family to the table so that they can enjoy a meal. If you need food and you missed out on this event today, there are still plenty of food distributions happening every day. You can visit safoodbank.org for more information. 
take a live look with live cam tonight. Busy roadways out there, 59 degrees. This turned into a pretty nice day today. Good, yeah. It did. It was chilly this morning. We were down in the mid 30s here in San Antonio. We started the day at 34 degrees. Then we made it up to 65 with the sunshine. Things are changing rapidly out there. Right now, we have a cold front moving into town. The wind is going to be picking up. It's going to be a gusty evening. So if you have those lawn inflatables, secure them tightly again. We'll be in the 40s later this evening, but wind gusts will be up to 40 miles per hour. So right now, winds are steady at around 10 to 15 miles per hour. It's going to be increasing as we go through the evening hours. And our future cast really shows wind gusts of about 30 to 40 miles per hour later this evening and overnight tonight. But by tomorrow morning, the wind is going to subside and tomorrow's going to end up to be another sunny day, but on the cool side as well. We'll start the day tomorrow in the mid 30s, a hill country freeze though. Okay, but San Antonio and other areas mid 30s, then sunning only 58 by the afternoon. By the way, mountain cedar back in the pollen count, it's low today, but we have that northerly wind kicking in, so we'll see what that does to the count tomorrow. Usually it increases it. All right, we'll have your full forecast and talk about our weekend and a little shot at rain coming up. The Public Health Authority for San Antonio and Bear County, and this is our COVID-19 update for the San Antonio community. Well, we had hoped that the post Thanksgiving case counts were starting to level off, but tonight we are reporting 1,359 new cases, which brings our total to 96,140, and our new seven-day moving average is 943. We unfortunately also have six more deaths to report tonight, bringing the total to 1,435 since the pandemic began. Those are three Hispanic males in their 60s and 70s, two white females in their 70s, and one Hispanic female in her 60s. Please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. And remember that our families and our friends, our coworkers are the reason that we wear our masks to protect those we care about from getting the virus. So please continue to do your part. We have 800 patients in the hospital tonight, which is up 31 from yesterday. We also uh, saw a, a pretty surprising and, and large number of admissions overnight, the largest we have ever had in this community for COVID-19 in a single day, 120 new COVID-19 admissions over the last 24 hours. For comparison, yesterday was also high and there were only 89 in comparison to tonight. 270 people are in the ICU with COVID-19 and 134 on ventilators. The hospital numbers are up across the board, folks, and that's a concern for everyone. We're at a very precarious point right now, and we need everyone to be very di diligent about the safety protocols. Not surprisingly, our school indicator uh, remains in the red zone as well. The risk level is calculated by looking at the 14-day decline, which unfortunately remains obviously in an upward trend. We also look at the positivity rate, which as you heard yesterday, declined slightly to 12.5%, and the number of cases of per 100,000 people, which is at 50.9, continues to rise. So at this time, in-person learning is not recommended, with exceptions for small pods of six or six uh, students, uh, primarily those who are uh, uh, special education at risk or students who lack resources for necessary virtual learning. Uh, so again, keep up your masks and the vigilance that we need to protect lives here in our community. Let me turn it over to Judge Wolf. Well, one day you feel like you're turning the corner, which was yesterday with a significant drop in the positive rate is, and, uh, and then you, you have a day like yesterday, and, and we really are reaching a, um, to me, this is the worst date that we've had, worst day that we've had since um, we've entered this uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas season uh, with 800, 800 in the hospital. That's the first time we've been over 800 since this last summer. And as the mayor mentioned, um, 120 more patients coming into the hospital. Uh, so the indications are, it's going to get worse uh, over the next uh, few days in the hospital. And that's why we talk about the hospital so much, because if you get overloaded in your hospital system, then you can't handle your COVID patients and you can't handle people that ought to be getting uh, operations. So we're going to have to really, really uh, push hard to try to uh, to uh, get people to, 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 to be 
<laughs> more responsible, but I'm afraid even what we may be doing now that what's happened post Thanksgiving is really coming home to haunt us now. Uh, we did do some, take some steps today at the commissioner's court to providing uh, some more relief for different groups. Uh, we funded another $2 million uh, for restaurants and bars and trying to help some of those bars uh, that simply were not able to get a food permit to keep going also. That was sort of a target. And uh, up to date uh, for restaurants and bars, we've already uh, already spent four million six hundred and eighty six thousand dollars in helping 180 businesses. But we know they're still struggling. We know it's very, very difficult. And uh, so we wanted to provide some more support to them, make sure they got all the safeguards they have that they can have with people coming in to their to their restaurant or restaurant bar or whatever you may call it. We did put up another one point five million for um, uh, rent support uh, today. Uh, I think we've assisted now 1,059 households. Uh, we need to allocate more money for the Center for Health Care Services for mental health and substance abuse. Uh, as you know, this has been a traumatic period of time for people, and many of them have really had some significant mental health issues being confined in, in the way they are, and just the fact that they uh, have to deal with so many issues with their children and and with the uh, fear of, uh, of, of getting COVID themselves. And we put up another million dollars for the community lab testing. Uh, we want to do everything we can to keep the schools as safe as we can. We were successful. We'd put up the two million and, and uh, community labs have been successful in doing testing uh, for students and staff. And this one here will be for the independent, uh, San Antonio Independent School District. So. Uh, Brought some a little bit more help today, but um, yeah, we're just facing a very, very difficult time. Thank you, Judge. We are definitely still in the fight uh, with coronavirus and COVID-19 pandemic. Generally, here. A precarious point. That's what the mayor said about where we are at right now. They had hoped that maybe we were seeing the numbers level off after the Thanksgiving holiday. We're more than two weeks out, but 1,359 cases reported today. The seven day average goes up to 943. But the big stat that both the mayor and the county judge were talking about, 800 people are in hospitals tonight, 120 new admissions in the last 24 hours, which is the largest ever. Yeah, indeed. And as you heard him say there, the school indicator is still in the high zone. You heard the judge talking about this being the worst day that we've had this holiday season and that it's going to get worse. He also talked a little bit about some of the happenings at Commissioner's Court today, some $2 million in support money for restaurants and bars, $1.5 million for rent support, and $1, and $1 million in community lab testing, among other things. We hope to hear from uh, Mayor Ron Nuremberg a little bit later in this newscast and uh, go through some of these numbers and what he thinks is happening now and what will happen next. Let's switch over to weather right now and talk about the fact that uh it's going to get windy tonight, Adam. Yeah, just within a few hours, you're going to start noticing that wind out there. So you've been warned if you have the inflatable lawn decorations, they could easily come loose and become your neighbors <laughs> overnight. Let's take a look at our forecast for the wind gusts. So this isn't for the steady winds, but periodically we could have some of those wind gusts here and there around town of about 30 to 40 miles per hour. I think that's on the high end. Nonetheless, it's still the possibility this evening and tonight. It's looking a little more impressive in terms of the wind than previously anticipated. So be prepared for that temperature wise right now. 50s and some 60s. Catula at 61, Uvalde 60 even, 58 Gonzales, 58 Kerrville, 59 in San Antonio. And you look at the big picture here across the state, see how those temperatures fall off. Lubbock only 34, Amarillo 27. That's a cold front that's moving in. This cold front is going to give us the gusty wind and some drier air, but not really have a big impact on our temperatures. You look where it's having a bigger impact. That's up in Oklahoma, parts of the plains, and even up into Kansas. They're getting some decent snowfall on the cold side of this system. Around here, we can't squeeze any moisture out of our atmosphere. I mean, even if we see clouds, it's hard to get much out of them these days. We could see a few sprinkles Friday into Saturday, but that's about it. So sunny, a sunny day tomorrow, 35 in the morning, then only in the upper 50s. 
for the high temperature. A freeze expected Thursday morning, even around San Antonio, then sunny in 63. It's Friday into Saturday, gray, damp, a little drizzly, but not much to really show for it. All right, thank you, Adam. Sports is up next. This essay salutes holiday greeting is brought to you by CPS Energy. Howdy, this is Andrew Higgins, Senior Director of Products and Services at CPS Energy. I'd like to wish all of the service members and first responders out there a happy holidays. Here we go. Our San Antonio Spurs wrap up their preseason with a pair of games in Houston starting tonight, ending on Thursday to get you ready for the regular season debut one week from this Wednesday against the Grizzlies in Memphis. Now, one of the changes we have seen this season has come from LaMarcus Aldridge, who's adjusted his game since missing the NBA bubble due to surgery on his shoulder. He put up 10 three-point attempts in the Spurs preseason opening loss to OKC, 121-108. to What does his veteran teammate DeMar DeRozan think of LMA's long-range change? Spending his game, he's been he's been knocked down with it, you know, throughout training camp. It's been a couple games where he had a couple uh, four point plays um, throughout scrimmages in practice. You know, he's knocking them down, shooting them with confidence, and you know, um, we didn't even put out regular minutes, and he got up 10-3. So, um, the more he get his rhythm back, get his legs back, um, get everything back, you know, he's definitely gonna be knocking down at a high clip. All right, tip time in just a matter of just over 30 minutes from now, and James Harden is expected to play in his first game for the Rockets this season. The UTSA Roadrunners have accepted a new bid to play in the Serve Pro First Responders Bowl in Dallas on December the 26th. That's after the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl had to be called off after SMU had to back out due to COVID-19 protocols. As a result, Roadrunners are now get to play in a more prestigious bowl game, ironically held on the campus of SMU, that will be broadcast on national TV here on KSET 12 the day after Christmas after finishing the regular season 7-4 and four under first-year head coach Jeff Trailer. We're all excited again. Right? It's, it's, it's kind of like 2020. It's just been such an emotional roller coaster. Um, anytime you get to play on ABC in that prime time spot against somebody, uh, we're not for sure. We're hearing Big 12. Um, that's pretty cool. We are still waiting to hear who will the Roadrunners' opponent be, but one team that has been mentioned is Texas Tech. Fight Texas Aggies put up a wrap on their regular season this Saturday when they face the Volunteers in Tennessee. That's after Ole Miss had to back out of their game against the Aggies last Saturday due to the coronavirus, robbing seniors of their final home game at Kyle Field. Still, the Aggies have been able to play eight games in this COVID-shortened season, winning seven and currently on a six-game win streak and ranked fifth in the nation and now favored by almost two touchdowns against the Volunteers. And tack on the fact the Aggies could wind up in the college football playoffs should Northwestern knock off Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship or Notre Dame beats Clemson. Head coach Jimbo Fisher is having None of that talk right now. What you do in, in postseason depends on what you do in season. In season is not over. We discuss that when we're done. We have to handle in season. We need to play well and prepare well, and then, then we'll handle our business and make decisions. All right, kickoff in Tennessee on Saturday is set for 11 a.m. The Smiths and Valley Rangers have advanced into the second round of the Class 6A Division I playoffs following two impressive wins, their 35-32 victory over Justin Day in the regular season, and then last week their 24-20 victory against Reagan in the first round of the playoffs. Both teams at that time were ranked number one in 12 South 12. Now they must go up against an undefeated Austin Westlake this Friday night in Pflugerville. I think it's very important since we've uh, won these last two games, it's uh, great to have a, a really great uh, momentum, and uh, it's going to be a really... Uh, a good fight against that team. We have a lot of momentum coming into this with these last two wins, uh, big games that we won against the former number one team in San Antonio and just that we can compete with anybody. And right, kickoff at the field in Pflugerville this Friday night except for 7.30. And all the Spurs announcers, by the way, are not in Houston tonight. TV and radio both are in the AT&T Center and they're going to call the game off the giant jumbotron. Wow. There That'll be something to watch. Be different. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> you it. We'll be right back. Our KSAT Q&A today is about Hanukkah in the year 2020. Rabbi Heim Block with the Chabad Center for Jewish Life and Learning joins us live. Rabbi, it's always a pleasure to visit with you. And, and I want to talk about what happened on Sunday, the, per, the city's celebration of Hanukkah and its significance in 2020 for you and for so many people in our community. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, Sunday, we celebrated the 23rd 
annual Hanukkah on the River celebration. Of course, it's celebrating a 2,000 year old uh, uh, holiday and, 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 and event. And um, what was so different this year is because of COVID, we did not have a live audience. We usually get over a thousand people to come down to the Arneson River Theater. And we were struggling to see how we can work it this year and, and, and not diminish the light and the joy for, for families across our community. Uh, and, um, and of course this year we need the lights of, of Hanukkah uh, even more than ever before. And their, their message of, of hope and perseverance and faith. And so we uh, decided to bring down all the parts of the, of the, of the celebration, the entertainer from New York, the lighting of the menorah, our mayor, other dignitaries, as we have every year and live stream it to people's homes. And we were able to do so. And uh, it was um, a, a very uplifting, joyous and, uh, and meaningful event on Sunday. You, you just said something really beautiful that I, I want you to talk a little bit more about. You said the lights of Hanukkah, we need them now more than ever before. We are in a very dark time. Do you think that Hanukkah carries an extra special significance this year? Of course it does. Uh, we've been in lockdowns, we've been in isolation, we've been ill and mourning and frustrated uh, for so many months now. And I'm sensing that Hanukkah has not come a minute too soon to give families an opportunity to, to bring a little joy and a little light into their lives. And I think it's uh, very much appreciated this year, even more than any other year. Talk about, the, um, talk about the significance of Hanukkah historically uh, for the Jewish people. Sure, sure. Let me give you uh, just a brief historical recap. Uh, in the times of the Second Temple, 165 BCE, Judea, as it was then known, was ruled by the Syrian Greeks. A tyrant named Antiochus was determined to stamp out any vestige of observance of the Jewish faith the study of the Torah, and under penalty of death, the Jews could not observe the Sabbath and other uh, Jewish traditions. This inspired a revolt of a small group of dedicated and courageous Maccabees, as they're called, and they rose up against the Syrian Greeks and miraculously drove a vastly superior army out of the environment of the temple. And uh, as most people don't realize this is that they did not achieve political independence with that war. It was really a religious uh, motivation, spiritual motivation that motivated them to go and fight. Uh, they would not have uh, rose up if it was just about political independence. And all they achieved was the liberation of the temple. And when they came to the temple to relight, to rekindle the menorah, uh, they, they couldn't find any oil. And they found one flask of oil which was stamped by the high priest stamp and um, it was only able to light for one day and instead um, they, they put in the the oil and lo and behold it it burned not for one day two days three days four days but it burned for eight days enough time to manufacture new oil to keep those lights burning and this was the impetus that inspired the rabbis to institute the lighting of the candelabra every year during the during these days and we're still doing it today 2000 years later all around the world and uh, if i can add um, the message of the menorah is so relevant today because each and every one of us has a candle a flame that burns inside of us our soul which is a part of god but many of us don't even know it's there. And, and even if we heard it's there, we really can't find it. And uh, the, the miracle of Hanukkah, the story of Hanukkah encourages us to look for that flame and find it within ourselves, find the inner strength to overcome our daily challenges. And sometimes we find it and we don't think it's big enough. We don't think it's strong enough 
And the story of Hanukkah or the miracle of Hanukkah teaches us that it's really not up to us to, to finish the job, so to speak, or to um, do it all. All God wants of us is to do our share. And if we light our little candle and we think it's only enough to burn for a short amount of time, well, that's what we need to do. And God will come and take care of the rest. And when we uh, give everything our all, um, that's what is, is, uh, is wanted of us, is demanded of us. And the rest is in God's hands. And so many times we succeed beyond our wildest expectations when we are determined and we are, when we are um, uh, filled with encouragement and faith to, to get the job done. Love that message. Yeah, By the absolutely. way, the video that we were showing you is from last year's. We showed some river this year, but last year's in front of the Alamo, we showed uh, some of the lighting. So that's not what took place this year. It's what took place last year. Rabbi Block, we certainly appreciate your time. Happy Hanukkah to you and your family. And we appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time. All Thank the best, you. Rabbi. Thank you for giving Hanukkah some, some air time. I, 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 find, I found it very educational. So I appreciate your time as always. We'll be right back. Bye -bye. Time now for our KSAT Q&A part two. Uh, right now we are joined by San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg. Thank you so much for joining us today. Mayor Nuremberg, I, I want to begin by talking a little bit about the rollout of this vaccine. We know that UT Health was the first to receive theirs. We saw some video earlier of members of the military receiving theirs. How is the city working to facilitate this rollout and, and what's next? We've been working for several months to prepare a vaccine distribution plan in accordance with the CDC protocols and with the state's guidance on who would be the critical group. So we are well prepared. Uh, and that includes a coalition of providers, uh, you know, over 100 different organizations represented that had Metro Health kind of at the center registering all the providers that will eventually be able to distribute the vaccine. Uh, right now, we're working towards um, we're, we're working on receiving our first shipments this week. We expect about 25,000 of the vaccines to be shipped to San Antonio. Of course, we have a lot of uh, folks who are in the first tier group, which is frontline healthcare workers and those who are involved direct with direct COVID patient care. Uh, eventually, we'll start working our way down the tiers. Uh, to the general population, and that is all going to be a very well-coordinated effort. Uh, but it, caution is advised. Again, we're all very grateful to see the first glimmer of hope in these vaccines being distributed, but it's going to be several months before, you know, healthy individuals, those who are part of the general population without any significant underlying health conditions are going to be able to receive the vaccine. So we've got to continue uh, to maintain our vigilance. Mr. Mayor, you called it a precarious point today. You said 1,359, certainly not the numbers that you wanted to see. 944, the seven, or 943, the seven day average. Is there anything that can be done from your perspective? I mean, can you, we do another stay home, stay safe order or anything like that? Are you even looking at your options right now and what can be done? to maybe, you know, try and, and back off some of the things that San Antonians are doing right now? You know, in terms of uh, regulations and restrictions, we've had one arm tied around our back uh, since April uh, with the state order. And, and it's, you know, we, we have found ways to um, include uh, safe regulations like the mask order that was put in place in June. But uh, it is very clear uh, that we we are restricted in terms of what we can do here on out in terms of new orders. However, what we can do is uh, very strict enforcement of the current orders from the local and state governments, uh, which we are doing. We've stepped that up and we can also be very uh, clear with the public about what's going on out there. And, and I have maintained from the very start the best tool we have to fight this virus is public trust, making sure that people have direct information, the data and the information from our public health authorities about what actually is taking place. And right now, the information is not pretty. There's a lot of virus out there. It's transmitting very quickly. It's in fact accelerating through our community right now. And so if we don't maintain our vigilance, the mask wearing, physical distancing, it doesn't matter where you are. You could be in your house. 
and you can you can uh, become infected. So uh, it is very present out there right now, and we've got to maintain our vigilance. And the best way we can do that is to listen to the public health guidance and um, you know take it very seriously. That's how we're going to save lives in this community. Mayor Ron Nuremberg, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Be safe. We'll be right back. Well, a chilly morning gave way to a really beautiful day today. Yeah, it was very nice, Adam. Yeah, it was. 30, Mid-30s this morning, then we made it into the mid-60s this afternoon. Tomorrow, I think it's going to be a little bit cooler, particularly later in the day. First and foremost, get ready for the wind tonight. It's going to be a gusty evening and a gusty night. Secure the yard inflatables if you have them, and then another freeze is likely to come soon. Because actually the wind is getting kicked up by a cold front that's moving in pretty much as we speak. So let's take a look at the winds across the state. And you see that northerly breeze coming in from the panhandle and moving through parts of west Texas there, heading down into south Texas. Steady winds of around 15 to 20 miles per hour with some gusts potentially on the order of 30 to 40 miles per hour. We're not feeling that right now here in South Texas, but it is a little breezy in the hill country right now. Steady winds around 15 miles per hour. These winds are going to be increasing just over the next couple of hours, and it's going to get pretty gusty out there. Right now, gusts are on the order of 20 to 25, but we could see them up to 30 to 40 miles per hour later on tonight, and even just later this evening. I think this is the high end of what we can expect, but it shows the possibility. So it's going to be the headline for this evening and tonight. You'll feel the extra chill in the air with that gusty wind. This is part of a cold front that's moving in. I wish this cold front could squeeze out some rainfall for us. Unfortunately, the rain is all out ahead of it. Louisiana into Arkansas. And of course, look at that blue. That indicates the snowfall throughout the day in the Panhandle and even in Oklahoma and Kansas. That's all spreading off to the northeast. And this is going to turn into a bigger system for uh, parts of the Mid-Atlantic and New, New England. Around here, we might get a few sprinkles or a little bit of drizzle Friday into Saturday. So a little bit of dampness then, but I don't think we'll get much to really show for it. Temperature wise, we're in the 50s now. Pleasanton down to 53, Rio Medina 55, along with Helotus. 59 Randolph area, Port SA 59 degrees, Comfort's 57. As we go through the evening, those temperatures gradually falling off, and then by tomorrow morning, we'll start the day in the mid 30s. So definitely jacket weather to start the day. And in the hill country, I think we'll have a light freeze tonight. Then by the afternoon, only making it into the upper 60s. So definitely cooler for the afternoon hours, despite a lot of sunshine. Thursday, nothing but sunshine, but we're going to start the day around freezing. So we are anticipating a light freeze even in San Antonio Thursday morning and then sunny in low 60s. We'll see the low clouds, a little drizzle, a few sprinkles Friday into Saturday. But unfortunately, I don't think we'll have really much to show for it. All right. Thank you, Adam. We'll be right back. Here's today's in case you missed it. It is Tuesday, December 15th. Well, after some nine months of battling through this deadly pandemic, it seems an end may finally be on the horizon. Local health care workers and support staff among the first in Bear County to be immunized against the coronavirus. Are you nervous? The first in line. 65-year-old Dr. Adelita Cantu, associate professor at UT Health San Antonio School of Nursing, who was excited but remained humble. I'm just playing one role that everyone else is playing nationwide to be a part of the end of the pandemic. Police arrested a woman overnight after she allegedly stabbed another woman. The suspect has been identified as 29-year-old Amy Diana Ramos. Investigators say an argument between the two women escalated, leading to the victim being cut on her arm and stomach. The woman was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. The Electoral College has spoken and Joe Biden is now officially president-elect of the United States. During an address to the nation last night, Biden repeated his calls for unity while delivering his strongest rebuke yet of President Donald Trump. Dr. Ruth Berggren, our frequent COVID-19 medical consultant, setting an example for our community, becoming one of the first few in the community to receive the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. Dr. Bergen has told us over and over as the public watches her and other health professionals get the vaccine, she hopes it will help build the confidence everyone needs to roll up their sleeves and get one.
Well, have you gotten your holiday shopping done? If not, shipping deadlines are quickly approaching. Today was the deadline for USPS retail ground service for the expected delivery by December 25th. It's also the last day to get FedEx home delivery and FedEx ground for USPS first class service for mail and packages. You need to get it in by Friday. Finally, Monday, the deadline for FedEx Express Saver and three day freight as well as UPS three day select. We'll be getting a little gusty out there this evening, so I anticipate the wind to be the headline tonight. Temperatures, though, gradually falling through the 40s, then settling in the mid 30s tomorrow morning. The exception, the hill country, where we'll, we'll see a light freeze. Then only sunny and upper 50s by tomorrow afternoon. A little drizzle Friday into Saturday. Thank you, Adam, and thanks for watching the 6 o'clock news. See you back here on the night beat at 10.